And we know, we know it's not about respect for international law. Bush doesn't give a damn about international law. We've seen that time and time again. His refusal to sign the 2001 Biological and Toxic Weapons Protocol. Refusal to support the International Criminal Court. Contempt for the International Court of Justice and the Nicaraguan mining. It's not about respect for international law. Well, what about weapons of mass destruction? Maybe he really does care about the impact of weapons of mass destruction. Well, you know something? Which country possesses more weapons of mass destruction than anybody else and has refused to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, the, the, the uh, Conventional Weapons Ban Treaty, which has refused to sign the Biological Weapons Inspection Protocol? It's the United States of America. Which is the country, the only country in the Middle East, which in fact has over 200 nuclear weapons and has refused to sign the Non-Proliferation Treaty? It's Israel. In fact, it's very interesting. Richard, um, Richard Butler, who was the, uh, the last um, head of the, the commission, said this, the, uh, the Verification Commission said, and I quote, amongst my toughest moments in Baghdad were when the Iraqis demanded that I explain why they should be hounded for their weapons of mass destruction when just down the road Israel was not, even though it was known to possess some 200 nuclear weapons. So the hypocrisy in all of this is absolutely staggering. No, this is not about respect for UN resolutions. It's not about international law. It's not about weapons of mass destruction. What this is about is George Bush saying that they want regime change. That's what this is all about. It's about oil, it's about regime change, and it's about George Bush Jr. finishing off what daddy didn't finish off. And that's the reality that we have to confront. And the, the implications of this bombing, and I hesitate to even call it a war, but I mean, the implications of the bombing would be absolutely staggering on a people who, as I say, have already suffered so terribly. The Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs heard evidence, eloquent, powerful evidence, from Dennis Halliday, from Hans von Sponik and others, about the existing conditions in Iraq they called them genocidal. And just imagine what the impact would be on a people who are already suffering. Over half the population, over half the population of Iraq are children. Many of the others are elderly, sick, weakened. The infrastructure, water, sewer, has been devastated. To go in and bomb in those conditions would not only lead to the deaths of hundreds and thousands of Americans and Brits and others, but tens of thousands of innocent Iraqi civilians. Devastated. A people that have already faced incalculable suffering. They say they want another resolution. And yet, and yet, of course, and I know Scott is going to speak of this, the reality is that they've already got all the power they need if they're seriously concerned about weapons inspections. They don't need another resolution. And when you look at what they want in the new resolution, it's very interesting. One of, one of the demands of the United States is that the United States can ask to be present in any inspection team and gain access to any part of the country, anywhere. And we all know that the last time around, the United States weapons inspectors weren't just there to look for weapons of mass destruction, were they? They were there to spy as well. So this resolution is one that is not meant to ever be implemented. And the tragedy is now that as of today, Hans Blix has said, apparently, that he will only return with a unanimous mandate from the United Nations Security Council. What does that mean? It means a veto for Bush. So we're on that terrible, 
terrible course towards war. And it will be a war in which the price is incalculable. Some of us remember the slaughter on the road from Basra in 1991. The American general said it was like shooting fish in a barrel. We cannot afford to see that again. I witnessed in Basra the impact of depleted uranium, the high levels, incredibly high levels of congenital birth defects among children there. And if this war goes ahead, we'll see the same staggering results. So what, what do we do? How do we stop this madness from, from going ahead? I think we have to speak out from one end of this country to the other. It's critically important, of course, that Americans speak out, and a growing number of Americans now, in fact, are speaking out, even though, sadly, their voices are not being reflected in the, the corridors of, of power in the American Congress, which just voted authorization to Bush to, to bomb when he decides to bomb. But we know that we must get the inspectors back in, and we also know that if there's any attempt to obstruct them in the work that they do, nothing stops Blix from coming back to the Security Council to seek a more robust mandate. But that's not, as I say, what this is about. What this is about is bullying, it's about power, and as, N and as Nelson Mandela said, he said they think they're the only power in the world. They're not, and they're following a dangerous policy. One country wants to bully the world. We must not allow that. And our government must speak out as well. Our government. In closing, in closing, let me say, our government must reflect the views of the people of this country that makes it very clear that a war on the people of Iraq would be illegal, it would be immoral, it would be an environmental disaster, and we expect, no, we demand of our government, of Jean Chrétien, that he be a voice for peace and justice in Iraq and in Palestine, not a puppet of George Bush on his dangerous march to war. Last week, last week, over 100 Canadians, including Margaret Atwood, Anton Querty, David Suzuki, Pierre Burton, and others, signed a statement that I hope many of you read called Time to Move Beyond War. And it concluded with these words, Peace can only be built upon a foundation of diplomacy and justice. We must work to uphold international law and respect for human rights, the environment, and global human security. Then, and only then, can the world move beyond terrorism and war. That is our message to our government tonight. Thank you very much.